This is just so impossible. I know he can't remember these blocks of times, but he's not the stalker. He can't be the stalker. I know he's not. Holly, you don't know anything about him. You haven't seen Ken in years. You don't know what he's capable of. Even Ken doesn't know what he's capable of doing, all right? Now, come on, let's go back there and finish it up. Did I do it, Holly? Did I tell him that I was the one who hurt those people? No, no. Even when you took the drug, you didn't say you hurt anybody. You never said that. Well, they're not letting me go home. I know. They want to keep you here for a while, but Ross and I are going to get you out of here right away. Well, they're not going to send me away again, are they? No, no. I'm taking you home. I promise. We'll take it. Come I on, love Ken. you, Ken. It won't be long. I'm all he's got, and I can't help him. Holly, you're doing all you can. You're standing by him. Yeah, one more member of my family. I'm failing. You, know, you have this overwhelming desire to protect your family. And it never works. That's because sometimes you are overprotective, and that always makes the situation much worse. You're not talking about Ken. You're talking about what I did with Blake, aren't you? What do you say, gentlemen? Shall we go? Wow. Let's go. Come on. Where the food comes from. You bring your toy? Come on, sweetheart. Come on. Come on, good boys. You want to sit up on the stool for a little while? Hey, hey guys. Here. What can I do for you, Mr. Warren? Well, first of all, you can call me Ben. Oh. Are we friends? Blake told me you were an admirer of mine. I never said anything of the kind. I believe what I said was I understood why she was attracted to you. Well, that's the closest thing to a compliment I've had since I came to Springfield. Saying I understand the relationship is not saying I approve of it. How much did she tell you? Enough. Mm -hmm. The situation was painfully obvious from the beginning. And who do you think Blake belongs with? That's not for me to say. Ross is a wonderful man, a wonderful father. They seem very happy. And you must be very happy they're back together. Hmm? I'm minding the boys so they can spend some time alone. And all is right with the world. You pretend to be so tough. Nothing touches you. Word of advice? Stop pretending you don't feel anything. It's not very attractive. Let me ask you something. Okay, ask me something. <laughs> Do you think I'm being selfish trying to find her after all these no. years? I mean, she probably has this wonderful life, and no, here she, I am, she, like hook her mother. She'd be lucky to have you in her life. I mean, you, you made some mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Yeah, I guess your kids forgave you when you came back, right? Well, it took a while, but yeah, they forgave me. Your kid's gonna forgive you, too. Thanks, Buzz. You think nothing of it. She may need you right now, you know. <sighs> David, oh. Hi. Hi. Have you and Harley found out anything about my daughter yet? Oh, actually, that's why I'm here. Um, I don't have good news. Thanks. Hey, bye, this is taking forever. I don't hey. understand what's going on. Hey, Josh, how you doing? Hi. Uh, listen, I'm going to put a little pressure on him, all right? Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I was wondering if uh, you might have seen Reba around here. You know, it's been so hectic here this morning, I can't even see, see straight. Um, let me think. She was here earlier, but I haven't seen her in a while. I'm surprised you let her out of your sight with the possibility of Annie on the loose. Yeah, well, she needed some time alone. I'm just a little worried about her, that's all. I thought maybe she'd come by here to hang out and wait for the DNA test results. I'm sure you're both going to be real glad when this is over with. You have no idea. <laughs> it, it, Reva is as obsessed about finding Annie as Annie was about destroying Reva. I'm, I'm just scared, that's all. People have such a strong reaction to Annie. I, it's frustrating for me to be the only person in town who hasn't dealt with her. Consider yourself fortunate. I know I should. But I find her fascinating. I, I know it may sound ludicrous to you, but in a way, I hope Annie's still alive so we get the chance to, to actually talk to her. Well, if you do that, I suggest you do it through jail bars. She has an enormous effect on people. I, I mean, even Reva, just the mention of Annie's name, she becomes a different person. For good reason. And Alan Spaulding, strong, powerful businessman, can't seem to let go of her. And you were married to her. 
That's right. Maybe you can help me, Josh. Maybe you can explain to me this lifelong hold Annie seems to have over people. Annie is the most complex person I've ever known. One moment she could be this vulnerable, needy little child, and in another moment she could be this ferocious, powerful woman. She had amazing capacity for love, and she could hate deeply. Her passion, Riva, was uncontrollable. I mean, it was limitless. But you can control it. No, no, I don't want to control it. I want to set it free. She's like a wild little treasure that was almost destroyed by the by people who wanted to contain her. No one sees Annie that way. No one but me. She doesn't deserve your devotion, Alan. I thought you realized that when she split town. You know, it's ironic that you and I were both drawn here by our mutual hope for Annie's future, huh? We both have very strong emotions when it comes to her. Yeah. You, a compulsive hate, and I, an unconditional love for her. I would love nothing more than be convinced that she was really dead. And you desperately need her to be alive. You think she's the woman that's trying to take your life away from you. And I see her as the woman who can save my life. You know, you don't have to believe what I'm going to say to you, but just, I know that your faith in me is pretty shattered right now. But just give me a second to explain, okay? I was in the men's room a few minutes ago, and I'm looking at myself in the mirror. I didn't even recognize that guy. He was, I was hurt. Confused, tired, and afraid. So afraid of being alone without you. I just I wrapped myself up in myself. Everywhere I went, I saw you. Every gig, I heard you. And you were never there. It's just like being the star in my own movie. And just for once, once, I didn't want the applause to be for that great horn player on stage right now. I wanted it for me, just for being me, just for Marcus. And staring back at that guy in the mirror made me realize, you know, I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy who's had a few lucky breaks. Some lucky breaks that I may have started to, to take for granted. I guess that happens. Finding you was the luckiest break in my life. And I don't think I'm ever going to have another one like that. I just want you to... I looked at myself in the mirror today. And I realized that I owed you the truth. It looks like Andrea beat you to the punch, huh? And I know that that was the worst way for you to find out about this, Dahlia. And I swear, I swear to you, I am so sorry. I really am. And I know that I could keep saying I'm sorry for the rest of my life. It won't erase what's already happened. It won't. Give me a chance. Just give me a shot to fix this and to get us past this so we can move on in our lives again. Because, you can Dal do. Dahlia, I don't want a life without you. Please. All I need is one shot. Don't throw away this love that we have. Is my daughter all right? 
Oh, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make it sound that bad. Oh. Uh, I just, um, as far as I know, she's fine. All right, then what's the problem? What am I missing?